All right, here we go. Last one. Not like last exercise, but you know, at least the last video. Or is it? Anyway, um, so let's go ahead and factor. Factor as usual. Factor in the top. Um, looks like I'll, all I can do is pull out a GCF. So it's an x times x minus 1. And on the bottom, x plus 1. It doesn't factor any. All right, so that's this in simplest form there. So vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 1. Why? Because that's what makes the denominator equal to 0. Let's dash that sucker in, negative 1. And how about a horizontal asymptote? So horizontal asymptote, I got a 2 power above a ooh, 1 power. I don't have a horizontal asymptote since the top's bigger than the bottom. So none. So uh, maybe I have a slant. Is the top 1 bigger than the bottom? Yeah, it is. So I do have a slant asymptote. So well, let's get the equation for that. Notice that what I'm dividing by right here is just x plus 1. So I should be able to get that with some synthetic division. So it would be negative 1 outside the box. And then up top I got a 1, a negative 1. Let's put a 0 as a placeholder there for the constant. Bring down 1. 1 times negative 1, negative 1. Add them up, negative 2. Multiply it, positive 2, 2. That's the remainder. But guess what? It's garbage. That's x minus 2. y equals x minus 2. There is our slant asymptote. So let's plot that. It's got a slope of 1, y-intercept of negative 2. Dot, dot, dot. So I'm just going to dot this in here with that slope of 1. Pretty spectacular. OK, so that's pretty much a dash dotted line. So I don't have to do anything else special with that. Let's find our x and y-intercepts. Get a couple of points on here if we can. So the top, where's the top equal to 0? I got 0 from this one. I got 1 from that one. So I've got two of them. 0, 0, and uh, 1, 0. Since the origin 0, 0 is an x-intercept, it must also be a y-intercept. So y is 0, 0. Let's see if that's enough points. Let's put those points on there. And I've got one at the origin, and I have one here. Um, let's see. The vertical asymptote, is it a disco dancer or a referee? has to be a referee since the bottom is just to the first power. So one side up, one side down. Yep. And since I have to cross through these two points, it must start up top here, come through the origin, dip back down. But it has to cross back through at that um, x-intercept and then follow that asymptote the slanty asymptote. Okay, since uh, at negative 1, that asymptote on the right-hand side it was up, on the left-hand side it must be down. So just come here and follow the asymptote. You don't really know how high to go, but don't worry about that. We just want to get the general look of that graph, what it's supposed to look like, so that'll be okay. So let's see what Geometry Sketchpad says about that. It says so far that I'm awesome. And some points you couldn't even see it. Ooh, a little bit off right here, but that's okay. That'd be all right. Yeah. Everything else looked pretty spot on, though. I think you would have to agree. Mm -hmm. Last, next to the last one, number 11. Oh, my heart just stopped a little. I've got a cubic on the bottom. How am I supposed to factor the cubic? I gotta factor the cubic as uh, you know the rational zero theorem, where you take possible factors of six divided by possible factors of one. I might I might cheat a little bit by looking at me just a sec. Just just to, just to warn you, warn you at, at the beginning. So I'll go ahead and factor the top. That should be pretty easy, pain free. So an x and an x. It's got to be a 2 and a 1, negative 2, positive 1, so it adds up to a negative 1. Okay, so I know that it's possible that I can try plus or minus 1, 2, 3, and 6, all divided by 1, so that's what they are. 
what are we going to try? Let me just go ahead and write 1, negative 2, negative 5, and 6. Well, just for the sake of the length of this video, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, cheat on this a little bit. And uh, it looks like that I, I might just try 1. Let's just try 1. Let's see what happens. 1, and uh, I have 1 there, and 1 times 1 is 1, negative 1 times 0, negative 5. But I thought, wait a minute, I thought this was supposed to work. 1. It's because I suck at multiplying, apparently. Where's my eraser? <laughs> 1 times negative 1, negative 1, negative 6, and negative 0. All right. That was silly. Okay, so what I've got left over, x squared minus x minus 6. Let's factor that thing. Get an x, x. Man, that looks familiar. So a 3 and a 2, positive and a negative. Okay, so here's all my factors. x minus 1 for the first one, x plus 2, and x minus 3. Does anything cancel out? No, they just, they're all opposite signs. Well, that's convenient. Maybe it's inconvenient. Let me make some space here so we can finish off this problem. Okay, uh, vertical asymptotes. We've got three of these suckers. We've got x is equal to 1, negative 2, and 3. Oh my goodness. 1, negative 2, I think that's right there, and then positive 3. Oh, those are really close. Okay, and then uh, horizontal. The degree of the bottom is bigger than the top, so that's y equals 0. x-axis, got that. Okay, x-intercept. Where's the top equal to 0? We got two of those. We got 2, 0, and negative 1, 0. 2, 0, put a dot there. Negative 1, 0. Um, right there. Okay. And then, hopefully, we have ourselves a y-intercept ratio of these. That is negative 2 over 6, so negative 1 third. So 0 comma negative 1 third. Right down here. Okay. So, on almost every single one of the other ones, we, we started on the right-hand side and we started our graph. But here it's going to be more convenient to start in between these two asymptotes. And that's because I have the two points that, are, that look like are going to have to be joined like that. Okay, so that's exactly where I'm going to start. So it looks like this one has to start up then so that it passes through that x-intercept at negative 1 and then cross through the y-intercept at one-third, negative one-third, and then skim over here to the other asymptote. Every single one of these asymptotes, one, 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 they're all referees, they're all opposite direction. So let's finish off to the left side of the last one. That side is up, so the other side has to be down. Okay. Now, on... Uh, Skipping back over to the right of x equals 1, if this side is up, the other side, or, I'm sorry, back that up. If the left side is down, the right side has to be up. So follow it, and then it has to cross through the x-axis there, and then come back down. Okay, and then finally, if the left side of the one at uh, 3 down, the right side has to be up. Is it going to cross to the x-axis? The answer is no, because there's no x-intercept for it to cross through. So let's take a look at that. It looks good so far. Man, it's, it's almost perfect. You can't even see the, the purple graph on this because mine is like so dead on. There we go. So that looks pretty sweet. Isn't this going to be fun whenever you have to do this all by yourself for, like, the working class and uh, the quiz? It should be real fun. Um, here's the last one. Finally, this is it. 
video is probably like 20 minutes long or whatever, but hey, we're going to finish this thing off. So, uh, factor first, if we can, so uh, x cubed over Palata 2, 2 x squared minus 4, hey, which means I can keep factoring, x cubed on top over 2, x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, any crazy business? Anything going to cancel out? Any holes? Nope. But I do have two vertical asymptotes. One at positive 2 and one at negative 2. So x is equal to plus or minus 2. Um, plus or minus 2. And the other side. There we go. And how about a horizontal? Nope, don't have one. I've got a cube over a squared, which means I have none. And I'm going to have to divide in order to find my slant asymptote. And I have to do regular good old-fashioned long division on this one. So 2x squared minus 8. I'm going to divide that into only x cubed. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to put in some uh, placeholders here. So plus 0x squared plus 0x plus... Zero. Okay. How many times does 2x squared go into x cubed? N none? That's not true. It goes in there 1 half x times because 1 half times 2 makes that 1 and then x times x squared makes x cubed and then half x times negative 8 makes negative 4x minus 4x. Okay. Minus plus I subtract it, get 4x plus 0. Does 2x squared go into 4x? It sure doesn't. So the rest of this is a remainder, and I'd get rid of it. So that's my slant asymptote, y equals 1 half x. Let me go ahead and, uh, well, I'll, I'll dot that in there, and then we'll come back and erase that so I have more room to do stuff. So 1 half x Shows that the origin has a slope of one half up one over two dot one over two dot. Keep dotting this thing in here. Go both directions and maybe do something like this. Man, that looks smart. That is a good looking graph. All right, now let's get rid of that division problem. Maybe there we go. Got to be careful. I don't erase the wrong stuff. Okay. Uh, x. What is x-intercept? Just up top, x cubed, so it must be the origin. 0, 0. Only have this point. Well, so the y-intercept must also be 0, 0. And that's kind of a problem, because I don't have any other point. Okay. So, um, okay, let, let's say this for a sec. Just for a second. Since this x-intercept right here, it has a multiplicity of 3. Think back to polynomial graphs. When it has an odd multiplicity for the 0, we're not talking about asymptotes now, for the 0, it's an odd number, so it crosses through. If it was a squared x squared, then it would be tangent to the x-axis there. This one, though, is going to pass through. It's going to either pass through this way, or it's going to pass through say this way. Don't know yet until we do a test point since it doesn't look like I have any other information. So pick any number that's not on an asymptote. How about I choose like x equals 1? That might be pretty easy. I wouldn't choose x equals 0 because I already have that one. So let's plug 0 or 1 into the simplified version right up here, the factored version. I had 1 cubed, so 1, over 2 times um, 3 times negative 1, which makes 1 over negative 6. So I have another point, and this point is at 1 comma negative 1, 6. So right like that. Now it's enough information in order to graph this. So over there on the left-hand side of the asymptote at positive 2, it has to start down. Come up through here. Oh, this is looking ugly. Cross through the origin and then come back up to this side. Okay, now let's just use the whole disco dancer thingy. Since uh, both of these are disco dancers because it's the first power on each of them. If, this is 
on the, uh, the one at two, x equals two, the asymptote. Left side is down, so the right side has to be up. And then follow the line of your slant asymptote. Okay, on the other side at negative two, on one side it's up, the other side has to be down. And then follow the line of your asymptote. Okay, so I'm gonna venture a guess that uh, my graph is it's a little bit sketchy right here in the middle since, uh, I don't know, it looks like it got hit by a train right there. So those are, those are spot on. You can't even see those points, but oh, there you go. So that's pretty good. It's not, it's not too shabby. Who needs a calculator, right? Who needs geometry or sketch pad? Nobody. We can do this all ourselves. So there's the sweet looking graph. That pretty much finishes up this lesson, this lesson on being able to find a slant asymptote of a rational function. I know I have a slant asymptote if the degree of the top is one more than the degree of the bottom. And being able to put all of the pieces together, all the asymptotes, all the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, put them all together to make the, the graph of the rational function. And uh, there's like a rainbow with an asymptote on it for you, just because. And then finally, there's your assignment. It's just one worksheet. Make sure you print that out for real this time because it has some nice graph grids for you to uh, graph all of your functions on. And um, hey, Rowan agrees with me. Those are his favorite graphs also. Way to go, Rowan. All right, see you guys in class.